Hi, I'm Colin, and this is Sci-Fi Deep Dive. So, with Jedi Fallen Order coming out next week, so it's right around the corner, I figured we'd take some time to talk about a game that everyone compares to Jedi Fallen Order, which makes sense. They sit at the same point in the Star Wars timeline. They're very visually similar, but I still think it's worth taking a look at a franchise that had its run about 10 years ago and comparing it to what's going to come out next week and what we know about it, and honestly, just paying a little respect to a game that was probably one of the last great Star Wars games before the Disney buyout. Fair warning, by the way, this video will contain spoilers for The Force Unleashed 1 and 2, and if you haven't played it, please go play them. They're really good games. Honestly, the combat is satisfying. Even though they can get a little bit quick time event heavy, they're a lot of fun. They tell very interesting stories, and even though they're not canon, they're definitely worth hearing if you love Star Wars or even just want to play a good kind of mindless hack and slash game for a little while. Definitely worth checking out. So like Jedi Fallen Order, The Force Unleashed takes place between Episode 3 and Episode 4, during the early days of the Empire, and then leading up to the events of A New Hope, about two years before the events of A New Hope to be specific. Force Unleashed follows a story of the son of a survivor of Order 66, who's taken on by Darth Vader as an apprentice. Darth Vader begins training this child to grow up to become his Sith apprentice to defeat uh, Lord Sidious. The Emperor. You spend the first half of the first game being dispatched by Vader to planets to hunt down and kill survivors of Order 66. The second half of the game you spend working with the survivors of Order 66 to build the Rebel Alliance. You go back and you visit the planets that you had visited in the first half of the game when they were sort of free and natural and find them under Imperial occupation. You get to see what the Empire arriving at a planet really does to that world. This really shows the contrast between living under the Galactic Empire and living in a world that at least the Empire hasn't taken interest in yet. For example, we see worlds like Raxus and Felucia as these sort of junkyard and flourishing wilderness, respectively, um, and we come back to them later and see them under the iron heel of the Empire. Eventually, your character plays a pivotal part in the founding of the Rebel Alliance and goes on to carry out a raid on the Death Star while it's under construction. The second game is much shorter, but I would argue better on most of the gameplay and functional aspects of it. In the second game, you play as a clone of your character from the first game, being raised by Darth Vader to shatter the illusion that, the char that your character in the first game was this hero of the Rebellion by having basically an evil clone. The game starts with your escape from Kamino and ends in the Rebel Alliance launching a full-scale assault against the cloning facilities there. It delves into things like Imperial projects gone wrong and the futures of planets that we had seen in the prequels under the Empire. Worlds like Felucia and Kamino. It lends masterfully into the vision of something we had seen during the Galactic Republic as being kind of pure and good-natured being corrupted by the Empire. Kamino is a great example of that. Not that Kamino was good-natured at all, but I'm just saying to see it under the vastly different political circumstances of the Empire is jarring and at the same time fascinating. These games, the first one more than the second one, also show us a lot of Imperial projects that we would come to see later in things like the films, things like the Death Star and the Executor, uh, being constructed and in their very early days, which is another thing that's kind of fascinating, seeing these, these grand projects that we're used to seeing in sort of a more finished capacity still in their early stages of construction. Seeing the Executor in a shipyard and the Death Star still far from being complete is, well, interesting to the side of me that really loves the ships and technology of Star Wars. These games, all in all, did an amazing job bridging the gap between the prequels and the original trilogy, showing sort of what happened in those 20 years and how things that we had seen only in the prequels were affected by the events leading up to the original trilogy. So, Ultimately, I recommend it. If you haven't played it, you probably should have tuned out of this video a while ago because I just spoiled the story of both games, but still, definitely worth checking out. And, you know, from a gameplay standpoint, they're a lot of fun. A little bit heavy on the quick time events, but definitely still stories worth checking out, especially if you love Star Wars. I don't know how similar they're going to be to Jedi Fallen Order. I was under the impression they were going to be way more similar, but news is starting to come out now that gameplay-wise, at least, they're very different. I can't speak at all to the story of that game. I haven't played it yet. We'll have to see next week. 
All I can say is hopefully Jedi Fallen Order will have fewer quick time events. There are plenty of concepts and plenty of things that we see in The Force Unleashed that I would love to dive deeper into and do dedicated videos on, but right now before uh, Jedi Fallen Order comes out, I really wanted to do a video just covering The Force Unleashed in general. And I'll dive into more of the concepts in depth later, but... For now, like I said, I just wanted to get an overview out there. So if you enjoyed what you saw here today, head down below, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell icon so you can get notified when I upload new videos. And don't forget to like and comment. Tell me what you thought of The Force Unleashed or what you're excited about for Jedi Fallen Order. Tell me what you want to see in that game. Uh, so until next time, I'm Colin, and this has been Sci-Fi Deep Dive. <laughs>